It is a beautiful morning here in my part of Iowa. I am Pastor Kathy Nutting, and I am pastor for the Orient and the Fontenelle United Methodist Churches. So it is awesome to be here with all of you this morning to worship God. It is a little muggy out there uh, outside, but an absolutely gorgeous day. We are kind of hoping in this part of Iowa for a little bit of rain later on in the day. And uh, maybe we'll get some. That'll certainly help all the things that grow, grow a little bit better. Well, grace and peace to you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as I said, I'm so glad to be here with you this morning to be worshiping God with you uh, and being able to share this worship experience, even if it is from a distance, uh, virtually. And so I just want to welcome all of you that are here, those that have joined in before and those that are new. Welcome. We are so glad to have you. Um, good morning, Jessica. I encourage you all to check in this morning and um, just let folks know. Good morning, Holly. To know that you're here and uh, that you're worshiping together. Uh, it's a great way to just see who is here and, and connect with each other. Um, and I think that's important. We all need to do that. So good morning, Barb. I see that you're you're worshiping with us this morning too. So great to see all of you and all of you that are a little shyer and haven't chosen to um, post a comment yet. Um, I do have uh, one important announcement, particularly for my folks at the Fontenelle United Methodist Church and all of those who are not away Valley fans. I uh, just wanna let you know the Fontenelle United Methodist Church Scholarship Committee this morning is proud to announce uh, the 2020 Nottoway Valley graduate, um, Nathan Cockburn, is this year's uh, scholarship recipient. And so we're so excited for Nathan. Congratulations, Nathan. Um, I know that you have a bright future ahead of you and that your faith will guide you um, on your path in this next um, exciting stage of your life. And um, we are glad to help you out a little bit with your education um, with this scholarship. So congratulations, Nathan. Um, you are a, 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 a good person. Um, we are so glad to be able to give this uh, scholarship to you to help you on in your um, higher education. Well, um, I do want to start out our, our, um, our call to worship this morning um, with um, a, one verse from the summons, and we'll just kind of work that in as the introduction into our call to worship. Um, and so I'll sing that for you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Call to us, O Lord, and ask us to come to you. And if you would repeat after me, we come without fear, even though we do not know what the future holds for us. And then this is my part. Give us courage and strength to be your disciples. And then I would ask you to repeat after me again. Help us reach out to all those in need. Lord, you summon, summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you. Lord, we will come and follow you all of our days. And if you would repeat after me, be present with us, O Lord, and inspire our steps in your service. Let us pray. Eternal God, turn and be gracious to us, for the road is long and we are weary. We sometimes feel exhausted by the trials of life and need your strength to sustain us. Show us your favor 
and offer us your blessing that we may abide in faithfulness and not be put to shame. Comfort us, O God, and revive our souls. Grant us the endurance to take up our cross and follow you on the difficult roads in life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I don't know if there are any kids watching today, but even if there aren't, um, I just wanted to share with you what I was going to talk about with the kids was um, about sparrows. Now, I don't know if um, big kids or little kids out there, if any of you are bird fans, um, if you pay attention to birds uh, at all, but I have kind of gotten into watching the birds this spring before the trees leafed out and now that they are leafed out, um, I even got this great book, the National Audubon Society's Field Guide of Birds. My thank you to Josh and Stanley, my son and daughter-in-law for giving this to me. And they even gave me a nice pair of binoculars that are small enough to take with me on hikes, but strong enough for me to see um, birds at a distance pretty well. And so um, what I did not realize, did you know that there are some 30 different kinds of sparrows in the United States? Now I'm familiar with the house sparrow and I'm gonna show you a picture of it, one picture of it. Um, it's this one up here. That is a, just a common typical house sparrow. And you know, if you have paid much attention, there are a ton of sparrows. There are sparrows everywhere. Um, some people don't like them because there are so many of them. They're just about as common as common can be. Uh, but what we um, will read about in um, our scripture reading today in Matthew, one of the things that we'll read is that, uh, and let me turn to that scripture actually to help out. Um, one of the things that Jesus says to his disciples as he's preparing to send them out in mission for him, is he says, um, do not be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both body and soul. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And so as I think about sparrows, which some people look at as a throwaway bird, right? Because there are so many of them and they're really quite small and very lightweight. And once in a while they end up on the grill of our car or um, laying on the edge of the driveway for some reason. We don't think about sparrows as being terribly important in the whole scheme of things. But Jesus reminds us that we are more important and more beloved to God than even a whole flock of sparrows. And that sparrows matter to God, that birds matter to God, that, that he knows when any one of them falls to the ground, that he loves them and cares for them and provides for them. We can think back to another reading in Matthew, and I'm just going to do a bad paraphrase here, where it says, um, you know, look at the at the birds and the lilies in the field. Doesn't God provide for them? Well, he's also going to provide for you. And so what great reassurance this is for us to know that God loves us and values us far, far more than, than the sparrow. And he loves and values the sparrow, that we are more valuable to him, that we are more beloved to him than all the sparrows in the world. And I think that whatever we're facing in our lives, whatever's going on, whenever we've messed something up, um, we can be reassured to know just how much God loves us and cares for us, how very much God values each and every one of us. Uh, and I find that to be a word of encouragement today and every day. So when you see a sparrow or other birds out in the yard, um, you can be reminded that not only does God love each tiny little sparrow, but he loves each one of you uh, even more, even more than the sparrow. Um, and so that's kind of my um, little sharing about the sparrows and the birds today. And who knew there were 30 kinds in the United States? What wonderful diversity that God has created for us uh, in nature, uh, in all of creation. And that's just in the United States. I'm sure there are more sparrows that exist in other parts of the world that aren't in my book. Um, 
So I'll have to learn all the ones in the United States first, I guess, before I take on the rest of the world. Uh, good morning to Sarah this morning and to Jolene. Great to see you guys here. Glad you're joining in for worship. Well, I want to get now to um, our scripture reading, and it comes from the Gospel of Matthew. And so I would invite you, if you are able and willing at home, to stand for the reading of God's word. And um, like I said, this comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. And I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation of this passage. And this is a continuation of what I read last, of, of the passage that I started with last week, where Jesus was giving instructions to his disciples about he gave them power, he was going to send them out in his name, and now he's giving them a little bit more detail about some of the challenges they'll face, but also some assurances um, about um, his presence with them in, in the midst of these challenges that they might face. And so uh, here's what he says to his disciples. Students are not greater than their teacher, and servants are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher, and servants are to be like their master. And since I, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, the members of my household will be called even worse names. But don't be afraid for, of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daylight comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both body and soul. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. These are some challenging words that Jesus is speaking to the disciples today and to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of scripture today. And would you pray with me? Gracious God, May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are indeed our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I just want to start out today by talking a little bit. Um, when I was a child, when uh, I was growing up, I remember that I was afraid I was afraid of a lot of things. And so the first time I saw The Wizard of Oz, I spent most of the movie snuggled up on my dad's lap. My dad was a big cuddly guy, and I knew he would protect me from the tornado in the movie, from the wicked witch, and from her scary flying monkeys. And then when I learned to ride a bike, my dad was the one hanging on to the back of the seat running alongside of me for the first few tries so that I wouldn't crash and I wouldn't get hurt. And after a few tries, he was running alongside, and then he let go. But I didn't even realize that he let go, and I was riding and balancing all on my own. Now, I'd like to say that as I grew up, I became a really great bike rider, and that I never had any problems with crashing my bike. But unfortunately, that seems to have been something that has been a problem in my life 
clear into adulthood. And I'm not sure if it's that I'm not paying attention to the potholes in the road. I don't know if it's that I'm not noticing the gravel or the sand when I go around the corner. I don't know if it's just that I'm paying attention to what's growing in people's yards and not paying attention to what's in front of me. But I seem to have an, an issue once in a while with wiping out on my bike and scraping up my knees. And uh, so, you know, sometimes I, I maybe I need my dad um, hanging onto that seat for me to keep me upright. Well, as children, we all learn to be afraid of all kinds of things, right? This is a learned behavior. We are not born being afraid of anything. Um, and we see that as parents, when we have a young child, we have to teach them what they need to be afraid of, what they need to be careful of. We learn that some things will hurt us, like a hot stove or a glowing sparkler wire. We learn that sometimes other kids may push us down or hit us when they're angry. We learn that to watch both ways before crossing the street because cars and trucks can not only hurt us, but possibly kill us and they move faster than we think they do. And we learn to be afraid of the other, whoever we label as the other. We learn that strangers don't love us like our parents and they may even want to harm us. And even as adults, we find that we have many things that we still are afraid of or have anxiety about and we, we wrestle with these fears and anxieties. And certainly the time that we have been in this year has had plenty of both fear and anxiety. Many people are still being cautious about being in groups of people out of fears of getting COVID-19. Others are feeling anxious and afraid for their older parents or grandparents who are, are at a higher risk of dying should they get the virus. Um, some of us are feeling anxious about having not been able to see those um, parents or grandparents for um, months. Um, and maybe only having phone calls or a video chat as our way to connect with them. So that makes us feel anxious and afraid for them. Um, some people are feeling anxious and afraid as they wait to get called back to work, and they're praying that they will still have a job to get called back to. Others are business owners, and they're assessing whether they can reopen, whether they can follow guidelines and still make any kind of a profit. And so there's a whole lot of fear and anxiety for them as well. Over the last few weeks, we all have become more aware of the fear and anxiety that people of color live with in our society each and every day, as well as the fear and anxiety that law enforcement officers face each day as they go into potentially dangerous situations and are having to make uh, to assess risk and make snap decisions that may have life ending consequences for them or for the people they're interacting with. And so that is a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety for them as well. And there are many other examples that we could name um, of fear and anxiety that we wrestle with as uh, adults. Well, last week in the gospel reading from Matthew, we heard Jesus give power to his disciples to be sent out in his name to do the work that Jesus has been doing. Uh, that work is, includes healing every kind of illness and sickness and casting out evil spirits and even raising the dead. And so the disciples are to go out as Jesus' representatives to give a glimpse of what the kingdom of God will look like. And so Jesus directs them to go, but to take very little with them so that they are going out depending not on their own strength and their own abilities, but they are going out depending on God and, and trusting in God's provision for them. So that pe and trusting that each person, that people in each town will offer them hospitality, places to stay and food to eat. Uh, and some people may receive them and some people may not. Jesus warns them that people in power will be threatened by this healing power and the disciples will be arrested, beaten and questioned. The unfolding of the kingdom of God, which is the work that they are about, will be threatening and divisive to the empire, to people who have power, and the disciples will very certainly face persecution as a result. And then in today's gospel reading, Jesus continues to prepare the disciple for the challenges they will face, but also to encourage them with promises of God's presence and provision. 
And what Jesus is talking about is what discipleship looks like, what it looked like then and what it looks like now. And what we can understand from this is that being a disciple won't be easy. Sure, sometimes it will be, but a lot of times it's going to be very challenging. And it will be challenging in such a way that it will test their faith and their commitment to Jesus as well as ours. He tells them to expect the same sort of opposition that he has received, because if that's how he's going to be treated or has been treated, then why wouldn't they also be treated in the same way? And three different times, Jesus says, don't be afraid. He plainly names their fears and anxiety, because naming it is really important. When we name what we're afraid of, what we name what makes us anxious, that is the beginning of being able to deal with it. We have to call it out first. We have to name it. And so he does that for them. And here's what he says. He says, don't be afraid of those who threaten you because eventually everything will be out in the open. He says, what I tell you in private, you need to speak boldly. And what I whisper to you in your ear, you need to tell as many people as you can. Then he says, don't be afraid of people who could kill your body, but instead be filled with holy awe of God, who has the power over all of creation, even the power over death. So God has the power to sustain you, body and soul. And then he says, face these threats without aggressiveness, and don't allow fear to paralyze you from speaking out, from speaking boldly about this kingdom. Um, Jesus reassures them that God loves them so much more than God loves every other creature, even the smallest of creatures, the sparrow, which are so common that they seem to be everywhere. And if even one of them dies, God knows it. So Jesus says, do not be afraid. Every one of you are so much more loved and valued by God than even a whole flock of sparrows. So if we are to be Jesus' disciples, then we have to publicly claim that we believe in Jesus and that essentially we're on Jesus' team. Um, for those first disciples, to claim their identity as Jesus' disciples was perceived as rejecting their Jewish faith, in some cases, it might have been perceived as rejecting their identity and their family, and certainly it was perceived as rejecting allegiance to the Roman emperor, and that was punishable by death, usually crucifixion. So Jesus says, this is going to be hard. Don't expect your family to understand all this. Jesus says, what I'm saying to you will be like a sword. It will divide. It will separate. He says, um, and he, he, you know, I think he identifies how important our family relationships are to us, how close we are with our families, how much we love them. And so we honor and we love our family ties, right? This is one of the key ways that we know who we are. And it was the same, and maybe even more so for the, the disciples in Jesus' time. But what he says is not everyone in our families will believe in me or understand your commitment to live as disciples. And so if we think about our human nature, we want to protect all the ways that we have defined ourselves up to this point in our lives, right? We want to protect all the ways that we define ourselves, our life with our family, our possessions, our status and our power. All of these are ways that we define who we are and how we know how we fit into society. Into society. But what Jesus says is that if you try to follow me and protect all of this life that you have, if you try to hold on to all of these things at all costs, if you love all of this more than you love God, then you have made these things idols in your life. But if you make God the most important priority in your life, then all of these other priorities, as important as they are, will fall into their proper place in balance. So discipleship is about following Jesus to all the places and to all the people he goes to. It's about loving our families and remembering where we come from, but remembering that our identity first and foremost is as a child of God and how very, very much God loves us and promises to be with us. 
carrying your cross, at some point we all have to pick up our cross and carry it, right? Isn't going to be easy either. But carrying your cross is going where Jesus goes. It's about going, in a sense, as Jesus to people in the world, people who are overlooked, people who are marginalized, people who are oppressed and mistreated by those in power, people who are not heard. Discipleship is about going with Jesus to all of these people, sometimes the people we'd rather not see, the people we'd rather not hear, people that make us uncomfortable for one reason or another. But discipleship is about truly understanding God's love and care for us and understanding that God's love is an all-inclusive love and care for all of creation. And discipleship is about being sent out with the assurance of God's care and the admonition to not be afraid, to be Jesus in the world, proclaiming the truth wherever it needs to be heard. It's speaking truth to power sometimes. And it's seeing where there is injustice and standing up and speaking up and working for justice in Jesus' name. For all who suffer, for all who are ignored, for all who are oppressed. Because God's love is all-inclusive, that none, none should be left out. Um, none should be treated as less than, that all are a part of God's beloved and cherished creation. So this work of love and discipleship, Jesus says, won't be easy for us, for all disciples, but it is indeed the holy work to which we are called into, to which we are given power to do in and through Jesus' name that frees and restores and heals. And that is about the unfolding of the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I would invite you now to breathe deeply with me, to take a couple of deep breaths. Breathing in God's spirit and then breathing out God's love into the world. Breathing in God's spirit and breathing out God's love into the world as we transition to our time of prayer. And I, as I asked last week, I'll ask you again this week, where have you seen signs this week of Jesus' love at work in your life or at work in the lives of the world, the lives of those around you? Where have you seen those signs? They might not have been big. Some people that I've talked to this week have seen those signs in uh, someone they know who has been sick and getting better. Uh, maybe they're not all the way better yet, but they're getting there. Other people have seen those signs of God's love in the beauty and creation all around them, in the flowers that are blooming, and in the birds that are singing, um, and in the blue skies. Um, so there are all kinds of ways to see Jesus at work in the world around you. And I would invite you all to be looking for those signs, big and small, and to be jotting them down and sharing them with each other. Uh, so then I would also ask, then what prayers do we have that need to be lifted up this week? Uh, what, who are the folks that we need to be praying for? I would invite you to go ahead and if you want to type those in uh, the comments box. Um, and we'll try to include those in my prayer. Um, I would uh, ask that we remember all the pastors and their families and their churches who are moving uh, these next few weeks and making transitions to new appointments or to retirement. And I would also ask that we pray for the churches who are receiving new pastors and their families, that they would receive them with love and with compassion and with open arms. Uh, I ask also for us to, to keep Jeremy Poland in our prayers as he transitions from ministry to a new routine and a new sort of work, just that he would um, feel God's presence with him, leading him and guiding him as he makes decisions and choices in this new part of his life. I would ask that we keep Helena Christofferson in our prayers, um, prayers for healing for her as she has not been feeling well that her doctors will properly diagnose what's going on with her and also have an effective treatment to help her begin to feel better. Um, I celebrate that Linda Van Vliet's brother-in-law, Larry Meyer, who is hospitalized in Ames and battling leukemia, is doing better. He's been in the hospital two weeks and his white count is starting to get back in line where it needs to be. 
and his wife, Terry, is now able to go and spend some time with him there in the hospital. So that has been a huge blessing. We just asked for continued healing for Larry, that uh, everything continues to go well for him and that he is um, getting better day by day. Uh, I would ask for prayers for all those who are sick with COVID-19, for um, all of those also who are caring for them, that they would have all that they need in resources and energy and endurance, um, that they would feel your presence with them, God, and your amazing healing touch for them would ask that um, all those voices that have not, that we would pray for all those voices that have not been heard, that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts of love for them. And, and then I would lift up the family and friends of Bobby McPhee, Ivan Miller and Dale Killian as their family and friends are mourning their passing. I just ask God that you would be present with them during this time of grief, that you would lift them up and surround them with your love and care, provide companions to walk along with them and all who mourn today on this journey through grief, that you would help them to know, Lord, that you are with them in this darkness and that you will bring them back out into the light again. Uh, help them to be patient with themselves and allow themselves to grieve in their own way and at their own pace, but help them to know, Lord, that this grieving will not last forever and that you you will be with them and turn that grief eventually into times of joy. Lord, may we seek to listen to what we have not wanted to hear. May we understand where we have not understood. Help us to love those with whom we disagree, that we might become more like Jesus. Help us, Lord, to pray, to lift others in prayer, even to pray for ourselves and to, to know, Lord, that you will change us in and through your love. And now with the confidence of the people of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just have to have a shout out to my friend Jan Manning, who I see is joining us this morning as well. Hi, Jan. It's great, great to know that you're here worshiping this morning. Well, it is Father's Day, and this is um, for some people a happy day and for some people a sad day, particularly if you've recently lost your dad. And I have a blessing that I would like to pray over all the fathers uh, this day. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we ask you to bless our heavenly, our earthly, excuse me, our earthly fathers for the many times they reflected the love, strength, generosity, wisdom, and mercy that you exemplify in your relationship with us, your children. We honor our fathers by putting our needs above their own convenience and comfort, for teaching us to show courage and determination in the face of adversity, for challenging us to move beyond self-limiting boundaries, for modeling the qualities that would turn us into responsible, principled, caring adults. Not all of our fathers lived up to these ideals, God. Give them the grace to acknowledge and learn from their mistakes. Give us the grace to extend to them the same forgiveness that you offer all of us. Help us to resist the urge to stay stuck in past bitterness. Instead, moving forward with humility and peace of heart. We ask your blessing on those men who served as father figures in our lives when our biological fathers weren't able to do so. Lord, may the love and selflessness they showed us be returned to them in all their relationships and help them to know that their influence has changed us for the better. Give new and future fathers the guidance they need to raise happy and holy children, grounded in a love for God and other people, and remind these fathers that treating their wives with dignity, compassion, and respect is one of the greatest gifts they can give their children. We pray that our fathers who have passed into the next life have been welcomed into your loving embrace and that our family will one day be re reunited in your heavenly kingdom. 
We pray this in the name of your uh, risen son, Jesus Christ. And we ask your generous blessings today and every day. Amen. That prayer was written by Tony Rossi. Well, just a couple of thank yous to all of you before we end our time together. I would just like to thank you all for your faithfulness in all of the ways in which you continue to reach out in kindness and love and compassion for folks that need a little help, for people that you know and people that you don't. Thank you for having those hearts of love and reaching out to help out where you can. Thank you also for faithfully sharing some of your resources, whether the, that's a sharing of your time, of your talents, of your money, or of your prayers, all of those sharings, all of those um, using what you have really matters. And I just want you to know that I've noticed and that I love you and appreciate you. And I also want to assure you that God sees the impact that you're making too for the realization of making God's kingdom known on earth. Um, I just want to remind you, if you if you haven't um, already tried this out, we have a new way. If you want to give some of your financial resources, you can do that online um, at www.iaumc.org slash donate, and then click on the Donate to Your Local Church button. Follow the directions. It's quite easy. Or, of course, you can continue to mail your checks into the church, to the church financial secretary um, as well. I will post those addresses um, and contacts on our Facebook page. Um, and if you have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to call or text me, message me on Facebook, or send me an email. Um, just a reminder to you all to be safe as you go out into the world to maintain a safe physical distance from other folks. Um, remember, no handshaking or hugging. Um, wear your masks if you can. Um, just know that I, I go with you in, in my love and my care and my prayers for you and that God goes with you as well. So now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this week. Go in peace. And I did want to sing just a little bit here as you're going out. A little bit of his eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Great to worship with you today. Have a great week, and I will see you right here next week. Bye-bye.